Hi, in this video, we'll talk about cofactors and coenzymes. And we would break these two terms. We all know that enzymes, which is having a catalytic activity, is totally dependent upon its structural integrity. And protein has complex 3D structure, right? And let's say there is a change in dramatic change in pH or dramatic change in temperature, it might lead to denaturation of its tertiary, tertiary structure and as a result, there could be a disruption of the activity or the alteration of the activity. Some enzymes don't need any additional help from anything. Its tertiary protein structure and how it is folded is everything which determines its catalytic activity and it's sufficient for its optimum function. But some cases, some enzyme need some additional factors for its optimal activity. Now, these additional factors which governs the optimum enzyme activity is known as cofactors. Very simple, cofactors. It's like a helping hand, you can imagine. Now, these cofactors of these enzymes could be of different kind of species. Either these cofactors could be metal ions, like ferrous ion, manganese ion, magnesium or zinc, etc. Or these cofactors could be relatively complex organometallic compounds or complex organic groups which are known as coenzymes. So here we can clearly like delineate two different species of cofactors. One is relatively simple like metal ions and one is relatively complex which are like organic groups or organometallic compounds which we term as coenzymes. Let us look at the metallic ions, how they serve as cofactors and do they have any role in terms of enzymatic activity modulation or catalysis. It turns out they have important function. Let's take an example from RNA polymerase, which generally scans the DNA and transcribe our DNA, right? Then what happens is in the catalytic site of these DNA polymerase, there are magnesium ions. These magnesium ions, being a bivalent cation, they help in uh, the transcription activity. And they help in the elongation of the growing RNA chain. There are two magnesium ions. One help in deprotonation of the three prime hydroxyl group, and the second magnesium ion help to stabilize the transition state, and it helps to stabilize or neutralize the negative charge on the phosphate backbone. That is how these magnesium groups in the RNA polymerase or any kind of DNA or RNA polymerase help in its catalysis. Okay, now we understand how these metallic ions can serve as a cofactors. Let's talk about some complex organic group which can serve as a coenzyme, right? Remember, coenzyme is, is one type of cofactor, one version of it. Now, let's consider a metabolism of pyruvate, where pyruvate gets converted to acetaldehyde with the enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase, and further it would be converted to ethanol by alcohol dehydrogenase. We only con concentrate about the first part and the mechanism of action of pyruvate decarboxylase. Pyruvate decarboxylase has its cofactor, which is thymine pyrophosphatase. Thymine pyrophosphatase, you can see it's a complex organic group. So this kind of cofactor, by nature, it could be termed as a coenzyme, right? Now this thymine pyrophosphatase is actually derived from the vitamin thymine or vitamin B1, which is normally available from uh, lean meat, fried potatoes, cereals, milk, etc. Now this thymine pyrophosphate, what it does, is it works like a acetaldehyde carrier. Whenever the pyruvate is interacting with these uh, enzyme having thymine pyrophosphatase as a coenzyme, it ultimately interacts with the thiazoleum ring and it forms an active acetaldehyde complex with the enzyme and which would be ultimately released to form the acetaldehyde. But the question is how the enzyme can help, how the coenzymes 
can help in catalysis. So let us look at it in a bit more details. So here is pyruvate decarboxylase. As you can understand from the name, decarboxylation reaction would be triggered by this enzyme. So here is our substrate, pyruvate. Now you can understand the pyruvate is two carbon substrate, a three carbon substrate, right? Now these pyruvate would be initially forming a complex with these uh, thymine pyrophosphatase like this. Eventually, this carbon dioxide would be leaving this moiety. Now the carbon dioxide is free, so hence a step down reaction, a decarboxylation reaction is triggered. And in this situation, this this thymine peroxidase is helping. The th thymine pyrophosphate is helping, right? Which is a coenzyme of this enzyme. Now, eventually, it would form an intermediate called hydroxyethyl thymine pyrophosphatase, which would eventually give rise to acetaldehyde, and the acetaldehyde would be released. And further, acetaldehyde would be acted upon alcohol dehydrogenase to form ethanol. Now, thereby, we understand in this video that how metal ions can serve as cofactors and help in catalysis and we took an example of magnesium which is an important cofactor for the RNA polymerase. We also took an example of a complex organometallic group which is our thymine pyrophosphatase which is derived from vitamin B1 and looked at how it helps in catalysis. So I hope this video was helpful and it was informative. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.